started my recording off by mass farming my doggos. I went from place to place several times over the course of two to three days, give or take, and literally just waited. Because every 10 minutes after you take a doggo's item, their inventory restocks, and it can be any one of these items. By the end of it though, I came out with this haul. I'll admit, I got a little lucky, both in a good and a bad sense, but as you can see, quite a nice haul of slugs, which meant that for the most part, I was ready to continue. So I immediately got to work on placing all the power cores in the places they needed to go, starting with my nitrogen gas well pressurizer. And from there, I moved on to all the water extractors and all the miners. Hi there, my name's TrueNav, I'm the only me there is, and welcome back to the Satisfactory Non Series, episode 26 this time, where as you just saw, I did the big farmo. I farmed them doggos good, and frankly, I got what I wanted. I got a bunch of power cores, or well, rather slugs, that I then turned into power cores, and yet, believe it or not, it wasn't enough. I'm actually missing about 45 or so power cores, for which I'm gonna dip into my reserve of other times the doggos have given me slugs. I just didn't want to dip into that too early, because I did not know how many I'd need, and again, it's just mind-boggling how many power cores I actually needed. And also, it's really good that they gave me flowers, because that will help me in decorating this place when the time comes. But anyway, on to today's episode, shall we? What it's gonna be about is, like I mentioned last time, we're gonna turn things on by modules. A few areas first, then slowly we'll turn everything else on. Today's episode will mostly be dedicated to turning on most factories related to the basic items I need to build the Miner Mark III, i.e. turbo motors and the fuse modular frames, as well as the particle accelerators. So that would also include the electromagnetic control rods and the cooling systems. Hopefully everything works, hopefully my math is right now, I mean, I did quadruple, triple, double, quintuple check everything several times even before I started recording this episode. So really, it's... I'm hoping nothing goes... awry. Array? Array. I'm not even sure what the word is I'm looking for. Anyway, to start this episode off, I'm going to place down the trains I'm going to be using. For this first station, I think I'm just going to be using the train that already delivers copper and coal to different stages. I think there is one. I need to check the timetable. Coal and copper, yep. This one train, it literally delivers coal and copper to different areas. So I'm thinking this could be the one. I'm just not sure if I want to use that one because it's already delivering coal and copper to different areas of Titan Forest. But I figure less trains on the overall network would be better. So yeah, that one goes there. For silica crystals, I need a dedicated train solely for that. And then the Alkaline Aluminum Sheets and Coke Train, which will take the, the sheets from the battery factory, which also, side note, I want to modify that too today, or rather finish it, because ever since last time, or since that one time I mentioned that I was, you know, gonna fix it up, I never did! So as you can see, the blenders are still there. I kind of left that abandoned. But today I'm gonna finish that up too just to have everything nice and up and ready for the uh, inauguration. So, Alclad and Coke. Alclad sheets will come from the battery factory, the excess that is, and the Coke from the petrochemicals factory in Titan Forest. Everything's come together. Everything is connected. Everything has been planned. The only thing that hasn't been planned is if my numbers are all right. Working with theoretical numbers is crazy, but since the first module I'm going to be turning on is steel production and everything related to the fused modular frames, let's just get the first train going over here, right? Let me just connect the tracks up and then I'll get to putting down the walls and cables to start powering things up, shall we? And as you can see here, I finished the tunnel thing I mentioned last time. Believe it or not, this thing took me like three days to make, but all you're getting right now is this little preview, this concrete beauty from the outside. I love the way it looks on the outside, and on the inside it's even more beautiful, but again, this is just a, a small teaser. When the time comes, I will show it off. Ooh, I'm excited. The train's coming. There it is. See it? I already went down. Chugga chugga. Bring me that coal. Bring it all. Climb that steep little hill and in we go. Granted, I'm going to need Mark III miners for the iron note as well, but I'll make do with what I have now to make a bit of steel. Production will be slightly halted or slightly paused for the moment, but what matters is that things work, right? All right. 
bring that in. Oh no. Did I forget to set this up? Darn it. I forgot. Okay, wait. Unload. Slight hiccup, slight setback, but I'll just wait another five minutes and uh, I'll be back. So the idea I've got in mind for most of these areas, like maybe not the refineries, uh, and I'm not entirely sure if I want to do it for all the places, but definitely these smaller areas, I was thinking of having them surrounded by walls, sort of encased, so that the hallways sort of loop into them. I could have windows to look on the inside, but these hallways will separate a few of the areas at least by walls and maybe some will be more open. I'm not entirely sure about how I'm going to do that again, but this does mean that whatever I decide to do with the power will have to either go through a wall or not. Not sure. Since I'm going to do this by modules and there comes the coal. Beautiful. All right. Ugh, stop lagging out, game. Since we're going to do this by modules, I'm actually going to place down a power switch. And I can't place it down. Hold on, I'm missing the quick wire. Right. I'm actually going to place down a power switch to help better control the flow of items and all that as I turn on the different modules. A, B, okay. And since steel is the basis for the fused modular frames, or for most of the things that are needed at the very beginning, Let's turn this puppy on. All right, all right, all right. Are we making the steel ingots? Where's my... what? What do you mean, coke? What did I think I... what? Well, that's embarrassing. Okay, so after fixing that colossal mistake and amending my train station to actually be able to bring in the coke, let's actually turn this train on and get things moving again. Bring on the steel ingots. Is it, is it working? Okay, yes, it's working. Let's actually look under, through and through the lag. Let's see now, come on. Over, oh boy. Ah, and there we go, perfect. He's gonna come streaming out this way. Oh, look at it. Okay, everything hooked up. Now let's turn on this switch, which allows us to start producing steel pipes. And now the game is really gonna start lagging. Oh, oh boy. Mm -hmm. Nice. There we go. Have they already gone out? Well, they're on their way. Beautiful. While these guys make pipes, let's also turn on the steel beam constructors over here. As well as, uh, what were these again? Ah, right, the iron rod. And boom, just in time for the auto save too. That'll lag my game a little more. Righty, alrighty, we got the steel beams. We already got the rods going. As well as, where's this? where are the steel beams? There we go. Beautiful. Off they go into the sunset. The shame that all this is under the main factory, because I actually do love seeing the conveyor belt process, everything working. That being said, the only way I could make this factory work was with the sandwich layers, but uh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful seeing it work. And so far, so good. I mean, I haven't seen any hiccups, and I think it'll be kind of hard to see them anyway, but let's keep moving. Okay, so I know where steel beams go. They go off into much later processes. The rods need to turn into screws, so we'll take care of that in just a moment. I think I, I should have added a normal splitter here. I think I'm going to do exactly that, too. Mark 2, mark 2, mark 2, got to remember that, and mark 4. Mark 2, and mark 2. This is so we can make the encased industrial pipes. I already know that much. Okay, this one has to go overflow into the right and end up fine. And the pipes, of course, keep going. And eventually, I think, yeah, they join up with the steel beams to go up. Did I already do this? Yes. Now, having made the rods, let's turn on the constructors so that we can make screws. Ah. Beautiful. Watch it go. Let's see now. Beautiful. Look at that line of screws. And why is it backing up already? What? Is it full? Whoa, 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 whoa. That filled up fast. Ha! All right. So these guys go into here. Now we got the screws going out this way. And upstairs. Perfect. Okay. Now, the next order of business I need to take care of is I believe concrete. These seven refineries are my concrete. And now with the limestone having flowed in as well as the water, let's get some concrete going. And now let's turn on the encased industrial beams. Yeah, there we go. Bring in that concrete. I actually want to see a bit of them flowing out before we do anything. 
Here we go. Nice. Okay, having done this, the next thing I need in order to make the modular frames are these guys. But for that, I need to turn on my oil setup and also get the iron plates going. And now here's oil all set up and powered and ready to go. Now, while this processes, I thought it would be a good time to mention that we're rounding up on the thousandth hour playing this, well, this playthrough, this non-series. As you can see down here, we are about two and a half minutes away from reaching that milestone, which honestly is pretty impressive, considering the scale of everything, really. I mean, how far I've come, how much I've done in this playthrough, as compared to the previous playthrough, at least, where I've got the save around here somewhere. Yeah, here we go. Project Future. 261 hours. That's how long I took in the last playthrough. Compared to now, it's just, it's mind-boggling, honestly. These are already processing full heavy oil residue, okay. So I think the only thing left is for the blenders to actually start working out. Oh, and we already have rubber, and we should have plastic too. Ah, we're missing fuel and rubber, and yet the fuel is not connected? Wait. What? Uh oh, let's check that out. But first, five, four, three, two, one. Happy thousand hours in satisfactory. Yes, sorry. Okay, now let's see what the problem is. Ooh, there is not. Oh, wait, what the? Oh, that explains a lot. This isn't connected. That's why this one didn't have any water. The good thing about this sort of system is that eventually it'll lock up once there's enough plastic and rubber going through it so that there's always just going to be an excess of fuel or things like that. The other thing I need is aluminum ingots for fused modular frames and that would be over here. Now while this process is, I'm not even going to look at it because bauxite is pretty basic and I know I don't have enough bauxite to process everything right now but I can get this going. A few moments later. Okay, so having modified my train line to bring petroleum coke into the Aluminium refineries. That's aluminium done, meaning that I can now make the aluminum ingots to make the fused modular frames. And also, we've got the plates coming into these blenders here that will be making the nitric acid. In the meantime, let's turn this guy on, which would be the reinforced iron plates, so that I can start making modular frames. And let's turn that on as well. All right, and of course, my batteries are really getting to work here. I've got 90% charge left, but that's okay, because they'll last 70, 80, and uh, something 100 hours. So that's good. This, of course, will take its sweet, sweet time. Ah, and there they go. Nice. All right, and having just set up these smart splitters, all of them, as you can see, we've already got the steel pipes, the concrete, and the encased steel beams coming in, and finally, the modular frames, meaning that we can now start producing these guys as well. Okay, this is coming in here real nice. What's the other ingredient we're missing? Fuel, nitric acid, aluminum ingots, and heavy modular frames. Right, the heavy modular frames are already on their way. They're just taking their sweet, sweet time. Two hours later. That took way longer than expected. I mean, it's technically not even done, as not all the manufacturers here managed to turn on on time but the reason why it's taken so long and it's something i completely underestimated is that i don't have enough production of reinforced iron plates as you can see there's four that haven't actually turned on yet and that's because rubber stacked to 200 and my rubber output is slow of course i did it this way on purpose because i don't need that much rubber per assembler barely 3.75 per minute but the fact that it stacks to 200 means that obviously take a long time to finish slowing down the production here meant that the modular frame production was halted as you can see over there there's only one that hasn't turned on yet of course this is after the literal two hours i mean I know I just used the SpongeBob meme, but it was literally about two hours just to get here. And of course, slowing that production down meant that the encased frames slowed down. Of course, in all that time, the few that did manage to make eventually piled up over here, meaning that I could turn this on for now, let it run for a bit, and, uh, you know, make as many fused modular frames as I can. And as it is, I'm going to let these store up as much as possible before moving on to anything else. But would you look at the time? This episode has been going on for a lot longer than I intended it to. So let's speed things up, shall we? I'm going to skim through the rest of the factories so I can wrap this episode up and not take too much more of your time.
After leaving the fuse modular frames to create themselves on their own, I checked out the cooling system requirements, and knowing that before I could actually turn on each of the respective factories, I first needed to create heat sinks, motors, and I already had nitrogen gas flowing in for the cooling systems. So I started with heat sinks, but in order to get heat sinks going, I first needed alclad aluminum sheets and copper sheets, which ultimately meant that I needed to first make aluminum ingots and copper ingots. So I proceeded to plug in my copper ore node and turn on all of my copper ingot refineries. And at the same time, I turned on the copper sheet refineries. Next, I checked out the requirements for motors. Now this one was a bit of a doozy because I needed rotors, statters, and crystal oscillators. But to make rotors, I again needed copper sheets and screws. So in that regard, I was already set. But for statters, however, I needed to steal pipes, which were already being made, and quick wire, which meant that I needed to first process deuterium ingots. So I plugged in the deuterium ore at the far annex, turned on my deuterium ingot refineries, and let that run. At one point I decided to set up my first swamp train for silica and crystals, because I would need both silica and crystals to get things moving on the crystal oscillators end. As for the quick wire itself, I had to turn on all these assemblers that just required copper ingots and deuterium ingots. Once everything was set, I got both my heat sinks going and my motors going. It wasn't long after that that I checked out the requirements for the turbo motor, and it required again motors, which was perfectly fine, pressure conversion cubes, packaged nitrogen gas, and statters. Now the packaged nitrogen gas we already covered as well, and statters, part of the recipe for motors, is also done, meaning that all they really needed to get was pressure conversion cubes. However, in order to get pressure conversion cubes, I needed two things. Fused modular frames and radio control units. Ah, but we already had fused modular frames, meaning that the only thing that was missing were the RC units. Which in turn required heat sinks, once again being made, high speed connectors, and here's where the quartz crystals come in again. But in order to make high speed connectors, I'd need quick wire, already being made, silica, already being brought in, and circuit boards. Which meant that I needed to turn on circuit boards, which needed copper sheets, which needed silica. And already, as you can see, everything is so interconnected, everything is so complex at this level, at this point in the end game, that it's just bonkers the way everything goes. So after turning on every factory and making sure that every input and output was where they needed to go, I turned on the big factories proper and started accumulating those objects as well. It was around this point that I noticed that my power was severely draining though. Alarmingly so, but I knew it would hold out and that eventually everything would just turn off again and I could start storing power again. Lastly, I needed electromagnetic control rods, so I headed to the other part of the factory and turned everything on related to that, as well as adding a train line to bring in the coal to make the steel ingots, to make the steel pipes in order to make the statters that would go alongside the AA limiters to actually make the rods. And so after quite a bit of waiting time, we are done. As you can see here, I've got my electromagnetic control rods, I've got my fused modular frames, my cooling systems, and my turbo motors. Now this video took way too long to make. Like always, I severely underestimated just how long it would take to actually produce things. I I may have memed throughout the video, you know, uh, depends on what my editor, i.e. me, myself, I, did. And, you know, maybe the Spongebob memes and all that, but honestly, it really did take a long time. But the only reason I did this was because I wanted to end this episode on a high note. Now that I've got all these materials in place, I can place down the Minor Mark III, but more than that, I can place down the Particle Accelerators. Which is exactly what I'm gonna do right now. And okay, here we are, all fully hooked up, all ready to go. They're looking beautiful, and honestly I would have liked to place them a little bit further apart, but as you can see, it wouldn't have made a lot of sense what with the conveyor lifts taking up the space that they do. That being said, I like the way this came out. Now that this place is really, truly, and finally hooked up, because frankly, as I sped through trying to produce things, I did notice quite a few hiccups here and there. We are ready to go. So, to wrap this episode up, let's just say that by next episode, we will get the inauguration. The entire place will be complete. In the meantime, of course, I'm going to be placing down walls, and I'll show you a bit of that progress in a small time lapse before showing off the full factory. But with all that said and done, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Satisfactory Non Series. If you liked it, then you know what to do. But as always, I'm the only me, so you be the only you. See you in the next episode.